So in the last video, we were halfway through our journey of uh, deriving the effective density of states. And we had reached to this point where I had uh, derived this uh, expression uh, for a career density in a three-dimensional uh, semiconductor. And uh, we had uh, we had together uh, worked out that this, uh, this uh, career density uh, can be represented by this uh, integral or this horrible looking uh, integral. And uh, what I want to do in this video is to simplify this uh, integral and derive the closed form uh, expression. And uh, to do that, uh, we will have to, we might have to use uh, some indefinite uh, uh, integrals involving uh, exponential uh, functions. So I'll walk you through it, but uh, don't uh, get uh, daunted when we use uh, these uh, integral or close your eyes when it happens. So. The first thing I need to do to simplify this uh, integral is to, uh, or you know, one of the possible things I can do is to, instead of writing this uh, 1 over 1 plus exponential function, I can maybe simplify this part. And one way to simplify this part is to, you know, instead of using a uh, Fermi Dirac uh, statistics, use a uh, 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 Maxwell uh, Boltzmann statistics. And, uh, you know, so given over here is the expression for uh, Fermi Dirac statistics. So this is the expression for uh, uh, expression for, uh, for Fermi Dirac statistics. And this is the probability of uh, occupation when you use uh, Maxwell uh, Boltzmann statistics. And both of them are, you know, plotted over here. So in this chart, the black, uh, the black curve represents the Fermi Dirac statistics, the probability of occupation uh, given by uh, Fermi Dirac statistics. So this is uh, over here, and uh, this dotted line it represents the probability of occupation given by the Fermi Dirac statistics. So we see that. As far as I'm, uh, and you know, this is plotted as as a function of uh, e minus e f by k t. So what I see is that as as far as you know, my energy or my uh, you know this energy minimum, which in this case in this integral happens to be the minimum energy happens to be the conduction band. You know that's the point which I'm from which I'm taking this integral. So as long as my conduction band or the minimum energy, uh, the difference of this uh, minimum energy with this uh, Fermi energy is uh, greater than a few kT, or we see that as long as I'm far away from my Fermi energy, both these, uh, both these uh, Fermi Dirac and Maxwell statistics are equivalent. So uh, in other words, if, if my E minus uh, EF by kt is uh, greater than one or you know to be safe we can say it's greater than maybe three then both of these expressions are equivalent and in the case of uh, of the integral that we are concerned with uh, in this video as long as my ec because that's the minimum energy that i'll be starting from so as long as my ec minus ef is uh, is greater than than uh, 3kt then i'm 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 okay to you know replace this uh, fermi dirac statistics with the maxwell boltzmann statistics so it's important to keep this in mind that you know i'm making this i'm replacing this uh, this Fermi Dirac statistics with this uh, Boltzmann statistics, but I can do that only as long as my Fermi energy is separated from the conduction band or it's below the conduction band by a distance of uh, three kT. So let me assume that uh, that is the case. And then I'll try to replace this Fermi Dirac statistics by a more simpler looking exponential function, which is given by Boltzmann statistics. And let's see, you know, whether I can derive, uh, I can evaluate this uh, integral. So let me move over here. So I have uh, some more space to evaluate this uh, integral. And so I have, what I've done is though I've repeated that uh, horrible looking integral over here. And uh, now what I'll do to simplify is that uh, instead of using this uh, max, instead of using this Fermi Dirac statistics, which involve this one divided by one plus exponential, I'll use the uh, Maxwell uh, Boltzmann statistics. So these terms will go away. And what I left with is just a negative power of my exponential. So I'll be just left with uh, this term over here. And let me move it uh, 
here and then there will be a negative exponent to this so this will be minus of this minus of this so now let me also do one more thing so instead of integrating uh, e minus ec i'll introduce a new variable with respect to which i want to integrate so i see e minus ec by kt so i'll integrate i'll introduce a variable which is x which is defined as e minus ec by kt and this is the variable with respect to which i want to integrate so i'll actually divide this term by kt and i'll also introduce a kt term over here so i'll I'll introduce a kt term inside this inside this uh, expression. So I'll I'll divide this by again by uh, by root kt over here. So I have divided this whole thing by kt and root kt over here. So I need to also multiply it by kt and then root uh, kt. So I need to multiply this overall expression by kt to the power 3 by 2 so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to in, say this is my x as and then when uh, e minus ac by kt is being varied when e equal to ec the x is equal to zero and when e is equal to infinity this x is also equal to infinity so i'll say that instead of doing this integral what i'll do is do this integral where i'm varying this x from zero to infinity and i'm integrating this term which is now root of x and this term which is exponential of minus x and all the other terms are constant so let me collect all the other constant term as well so i have 8 by root 2 m to power 3 by 2 and then i have kt to the power 3 by 2 and then divided by h cube and this whole thing is now multiplied by e to power minus of ec minus ef by kt so now the only thing i'm left to evaluate is this this integral and this looks like something you know that might have a simple formula or this might equate to a to a simple value so let me check that so this is root of uh, x multiplied by exponential of minus x and this the whole thing is what i want to integrate from zero to infinity so let me you know to 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 see whether this this thing is something you know finite or this is something uh, which is uh, comes out to be something nice let me go to uh, my one of my favorite website uh, Wolfram Alpha and I'll write down the expression which I want to integrate so the expression that I want to integrate is x to the power 0.5 multiplied by uh, e to the power of minus x and let's see what this gives me so I'll wait for this and close the ad all right so looks like you know there is a, the indefinite integral of this is half times half of root pi multiplied by the error function and then this minus e to power minus e x uh, into root of x so let me you know copy this so what this is telling me is that this integral and let me separate this out this integral evaluates to let me see over here again half times root pi and this is error function so this is error function of, of root x minus e to power minus x into root x and now i need to evaluate this from at zero and infinity so if i look at this term 
this term will go to zero at infinity because this exponential will go to zero. It will also go to zero at x equal to zero because it's multiplied by root x. So I can just, for the purpose, uh, for my purpose over here, I can just uh, neglect this term. Now let's look at this term. So now this term I need to evaluate at infinity. So at infinity, I know that my error function is equal to one. So this will go to, there will be a root pi by two term from here minus this uh, term at uh, x uh, equal to zero. And I also know that my error function is zero at x equal to zero. And you know, you can look it up that error function is in fact zero at uh, x equal to zero. So essentially what I'm left with is just this term. So this, this subtracted by zero, which is essentially the same as root pi by two. So this, this, this integral evaluates to root pi by two. So now let's see what's the overall, overall expression I'm left with. So what I've left with, I'm, you know, I've, I've essentially, uh, I'm almost towards the end over here. So I have this thing and I'm multiplying it by root pi by two. And I see that I have kt, which is multiplied, uh, which has an exponent of uh, three by two. Then my effective mass has an exponent of, uh, of uh, three by two as well. So I can, you know, collect some, uh, collect the terms which have, uh, which have uh, which have uh, all the power exponent of uh, three by two. Similarly, I see I have a pi here. I have a root pi here. So that might be another term which has uh, which has uh, exponential dependence of three by two. So let me collect all those terms which have an exponential dependence of uh, three by two. So I have uh, I have uh, kt over here. So in my numerator, I have uh, kt. Then I also have this uh, mass, which also has an exponential dependence of uh, three by two. Then I have this pi and another square root of pi from here. So I have pi inside this as well. Then I have h cube, which I can write as h square into three by two. And then in terms of uh, in terms of the constant terms I have two over here and I have I have basically four uh, into square root of two which I can also write as two into two to the power three by two and so this is all the terms over here and this is then just being multiplied by this exponential exponential function which is given like this so now I can I can essentially write this thing as my effective density of state, which is now being multiplied by this exponential function. So now if I look at my ex effective density of state, or you know, for, for all purposes where I want to evaluate my career density in my, in this uh, three dimensional semiconductor, it's just given by this expression where it's uh, my effective density of states multiplied by this uh, exponential, which looks like uh, something like, you know, coming from uh, Maxwell uh, Boltzmann statistics. So in other words, my effective density of states for a three dimensional semiconductor is uh, given by this expression where it has a dependence uh, on uh, the mass and it has a temperature dependence and uh, for the case of a three-dimensional semiconductor, its dependence is given by three-half uh, the power. And I have not derived uh, in uh, this uh, video, but you can also derive this uh, this uh, effective density of uh, uh, of uh, of states for a conduction band in a two-dimensional and one-dimensional semiconductor. And the only difference that uh, arises, and but it's a very important difference, is in this power of this uh, exponent. So instead of having a power of uh, three by two for a two-dimensional semiconductor, you get a power of one. For a one-dimensional semiconductor, you get a power of a half.